Good evening, everybody. Welcome to League of Extraordinary Inventors. I'm your host, Mike from Faraday Research. It is Friday night. It is uh, August 23rd, 2024. Welcome to the show. Free Energy Fridays. We got Bernie on. We got Nathan on. We got Philip on. And we got Noel or Lulu. Uh, they're all joining us tonight, our regular panel. And uh, welcome to the show. Don't forget, everybody, uh, live chat is open. Uh, if you guys want to just jump in, go ahead. Uh, my main computer just kind of went bye-bye. <laughs> I have to reboot uh, my uh, stream here again. I don't know what the heck happened there. That was weird. I have to log back into it. And like my whole browser just went bye bye. So it's a good thing I got the actual phone going that has the software on it so I could actually keep the stream running without everything going bye bye. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, perfect timing, right as the start <laughs> of the show, right? Okay, let's see if I can log back. You're in being here. targeted. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, gee, I, gee, I wonder. Yeah, gee, I wonder, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Right on cue. Yeah. Right on cue. They're really punctual tonight, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, so, so sometimes yeah. sometimes when my network at home, my local area network at home is overloaded, and I'm the only one here. It's like, geez, is, is somebody like... Uh, look, for that, look for that black band outside with a lot of antennas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no kidding, no. Huh? But anyways, um, yeah, I got it up and running again. We're good to go. Yeah. Um, welcome, everyone. Live chat is open. Uh, Nathan, uh, any news, any progress on your Tesla coils that you're working on? Oh, everything's working great. Uh, I actually, after I put the toggle switch in, I put it in a potentiometer, and I can control exactly how much, um, like, that goes back Game. into it. How Game much feedback. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can just adjust it and then hit it, you know what I mean, at different times to see right. exactly when I get the most out of it, to get the most yeah, power out of it. Because remember last week I asked you, are you using a potentiometer or are you using a toggle? Because the first thing that came to my mind was you want to dial it in. You know, you have that option of shutting it on and off, but also dial it in to the exact gain that you want, right? Yeah, so, so it just... Basically, a toggle, a diode, and a potentiometer. There and go. that's as simple as it gets, and it works perfect. The only thing is, I got to tie it into the ultrasound button because I'm over here going like this with two fingers. You know what I mean? Instead mm -hmm. of just hitting one. That's it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Philip, uh, you got an update for us? Uh... Yeah, actually, um, like uh, we're. Uh previously saying my experiment is uh, about to be done it was supposed to be done this week but it just got post postponed next week for next week because that's i'm talking about the uh for the gallium vortex here the mhd gallium vortex right. um which, which is very similar to the tr3b but um, right. I think the tr 3 b is more plasma oriented, something like that. And it's also super cool, just from what I understand. They super cool it down. Yeah. Um, so uh, so anyway, uh, they they I suggested them to use the well. What you suggested me to to use a welder. Yeah. But uh, it's gonna it's gonna heat up the uh, the experiment very quickly at 300 amps. Yeah. So uh, we might we might start by pulsing it or using. A, uh, yeah, so that's probably what you're gonna want to do. Yeah, start pulsing it. Then that way, you know, you'll have less chance of it overheating and causing damage to the experiment, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm glad I'm not the one uh, doing the experiment itself directly. So this time, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't want I don't want the their their equipment to be damaged either. Otherwise, it's gonna yeah. slow things down. Right. 
So, um, so that's that. And uh, so next week, next week, man, I, I know I sound like a, an alcoholic, like a, a, a drunk alcoholic, mm -hmm. like a, like a, des promesses divines, you know, like we say in French, like a, an alcoholic making pr promises. <laughs> well, well, you know what it happens, right? You know, uh, there will be delays. Sometimes it's technical. Sometimes it's uh, getting materials in, or um, you know, just getting all the right stuff together at the same time to make it happen, right? Yeah. So, uh, um, so hopefully it's going to be done next week, and I'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And um, on the uh, on the, uh, the I'm supposed like I was telling Lulu uh, earlier, I'm supposed to go to Austin, Texas in December for another defense conference for the third time. I'm going there, but this time it's going to be in Austin, Texas, and um, I'm going to show off all, all my updates and uh, I'm going to close a circle with my theory because. My theory also predicts that it's pretty easy to uh, th there's a way to to have an efficient electrolysis to generate hydrogen out of water. There's a there's a way to do that. I'm not gonna make it public yet, but um, I want to test it first. But um, it's pretty obvious to me that it's gonna work. Yeah, and. Um, and, uh, are, are you going to take your, your gallium ex uh, uh, experiment with you there? Are, are you going to... No, no, no. I'm, I'm just going to take videos of it. I'm not going to bring, bring it over there. Because it's a uh, neodymium magnet. And, uh, you know, the, the gallium is at a solid state in the mm -hmm. in the luggage. Yeah, so I, don't, yeah I was wondering. I was like, like how are you going to do that? I was like, yeah. yeah, all right. So the, the gallium is, at, is in solid state. But if it if it's warm, it's gonna get liquid and yeah. it's gonna right. spill all over the the place. Right. So it's, uh, not something, it's not something you can just shove in a briefcase and take it away, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I was just curious. I was like, yeah, I'm curious. How? What were you gonna do? You know. But all right. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh, last time in Washington D.C. was like a little room, and there were it was more like private, more interrogation. Uh, Interrogation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a yeah. light, a, a light on top of my head, like that. Yeah. <laughs> or like uh, being uh, interviewed without the men in black standing behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But ah, uh, oh, the, oh, the fun you must have had. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. Like you know, somebody that. It's not the people that come to them they should fear. It's the people that don't come to them. You know, it's the other way around. Yeah, exactly. You're presenting this publicly. It's not something that you should be fearing. You right. know, the ones that, you know, hide their identities that don't talk about it. Those are the mm -hmm. scary ones. But so, the, yeah. when we were in Washington D.C., it was uh, no next to Washington D.C. was not Washington D.C. I forgot the name. It's uh, Newark, I think, or something like that. Uh, no, sorry, it's, uh, so, no, no, not uh, no, sorry, I, for, I forgot the name, but the at the at the um, it was Gaylord Center in uh, uh, some city uh, across the river from Washington D.C. But um, there was another conference at the same time, but it was the big banks. The big banks were there at the same time, so the deep state was there. Mm -hmm. Ah. Gee, I wonder. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> gee, gee, I wonder why. That was pretty funny. So, um, I'm. Yep. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's not going to be the same in uh, Texas. Texas is more. Uh, it's. Uh, I guess uh, hopefully it's going to be more private and more. There's not going to be uh, multiple conferences intermixed together. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll That's see. Awesome. And, um, and uh, yeah, other than that, other than that, my uh, my company is about is uh, has ninety percent chances of partnering up with another big company. So now, 
you know, it's 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 always hard to break the ice with by selling a software or partnering up. So no, I, I finally broke the ice. Uh, well, I have 99% chance of breaking the, the ice. So I'm pretty happy about it because now, now I can go see the big boys, the big players and go talk to them because I, I tried to talk to NVDE before and they, they, they said, well, it's, the company is good, but try to sell, try to, uh, to have some, some, uh, traction with your sales or, or partner partnership and things like that. And now that's exactly what I have. So I can go talk to NVD again and the big boys. So, um, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, a uh, grand, grand, grand slam, like you say in, uh, in baseball terms, like <laughs> grand slam. Three projects are working, so that's good. No, well, you're working hard on it, so obviously things are gonna eventually work out, right? Yeah, but a lot of sacrifices also. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of the time it's time-consuming and financial sacrifices and things like that. Mm. I didn't really hang out a lot for the last six months, and um, mm. I'm right next to downtown Montreal and. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty weird, but uh, uh, I'm gonna catch up in, in, in the fall during the fall time. No, 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 no questions asked. Yeah. But um, yeah. So uh, you. So yeah. That, that's uh, that's my update. But uh, right on. That's good. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. We'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Uh, maybe you'll be uh, sitting on some uh, deposit money, and you got more money to play with. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the goal. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Congratulations, yeah. Phil. Fingers crossed for you. Uh, sorry. Fingers crossed. You get that money, right? Like fingers yeah. crossed, my friend. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, and I uh, will. Uh, our, our little uh, bonfire is on, on the Indian the agenda as well, and I'm not. Uh, we're gonna go to Calgary at some point, and we're gonna have a bonfire. That's right. With, in, with, uh, in minus forty degrees. <laughs> no, 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 it'll be this summer or next summer. You make it to Calgary, and I will make it to Montreal, and we'll do a couple meetups. Awesome bonfires <laughs> for sure. Then, uh, how, sounds, how far sounds like is Calgary? Fun. How far out was the distance between Calgary and Montreal? Oh, probably about 30 hours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, that's like 30 hour drive. Yeah. While uh, oh Philip's God. six hours, Philip is six hours from me. So, oh, okay. Because I've, I've done You're that. I've, yeah. Yeah. I'm just outside of Toronto. So, from Toronto. where I live to uh, downtown Montreal, I'm looking at six hours. I've, I've been to Montreal that. once. Yeah. In the winter cold. time or summertime? Winter time. Very cold. Very cold. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, cold. Montreal's cold. Yeah. Even uh, Ottawa's God, Ottawa's cold. cold. Yeah. Very yeah. Cold. Uh, yeah. Ottawa's bad too. Yeah. yeah. It's very cold. Well, and Calgary too. You you were attracted by the cold temperature, so you said uh, <laughs> said oh, yeah, I gotta go there at minus forty. <laughs> no, I, I I had a cousin, his uh, wife was having a baby and uh, she was having trouble with the, you know, her delivery and he wanted me up there to kind of help out. So I oh, flew yeah. up there for, yeah, for a week. And then I ended up having friends there and we, I took care of her and then we still had so much fun. I attended a concert oh. and, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mo so Montreal's good. a nice, Montreal's a really nice city to visit in the summertime. They got a lot of festivals going on and stuff like that. Uh, when I was there, they right? had, they like, just, just, they had the Just for Laughs tour, uh, comedy show. They had that in downtown Montreal. Oh, it's amazing. The Just for Laughs venue is so epic. Like, yeah. Montreal is just, it's a town of festivals and arts and good times in the summer, that's for sure. There's a lot of good uh, architecture there. They got the best bagels on the planet. It's in Montreal. There's a great Canadian bagel I went to. Oh, meat knows. sandwiches. Schwartz, Schwartz and smoked meat sandwiches. Oh my, I gotta make it back just for that. Hey Philip, 
Philip, uh, do you know where the Great Canadian Bagel's located in downtown Montreal? Uh, it rings me a bell, but I don't know where exactly. Yeah, it's in the northwest end of Montreal. Um, I forget what street it's on, but I went to the factory where a great Canadian bagel. Like, oh, is it the, around Jean, Jean Talon? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that's where I, I go to Jean Talon every week to train yeah. in Kung Fu. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I know so, that place. Yeah, so we were there and we go, we walk in the store. It's a, the building's 100 years old. Like, it's really old. Okay. And you walk in there, you walk in there. And it, there's totes from the ground right to the ceiling full of bagels. Like every bagel you can imagine is there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it's just, it's wall to wall. And like, it's not a big bakery. It's small. But holy cow, they packed them in there. Like the whole, like the walking area is all bagels. You got to walk around the totes and everything. Holy nice. Nice. I yeah. just posted the link of a... Uh... The heavy Montreal show, it's all the uh, metal concerts. It starts in September, or October, and November. There's a lot of yeah. good good bands that are gonna, are gonna come by during the fall right. time. So it's a uh, for for those for uh, metal fans are craving about it. And even if you don't like metal, I mean you're gonna like it. Yeah, I like metal. <laughs> I like I do metal too. <laughs> yeah. I like the old stuff. I like early '80s, early '90s metal. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, you work. Uh, sometimes I Just do my research or I work on something uh, with that music at the same time, and yeah, it beats, Get your mind beats going, my right? brain up. Yeah, yeah. I, that for work, I like techno because you know. That works, but for the the that is for you know glass of whiskey and just sit back and relax and let, yeah like that <laughs> but for metal music yeah you, that's a different you, drink you know whiskey? I you're do. a whiskey drinker wow I, yeah. Oh, yeah I'm a yeah, nice. yes, I'm a whiskey drinker nice. yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. drink I don't drink very often well, where I like to drink the most is in front of a campfire. Yeah, have a couple of drinks in front of a campfire. That's like, yeah. I don't. I don't like to drink room. alone. If like I, I haven't had like I don't. I don't drink if you know like maybe la New Year's was the last time I actually had whiskey because you know if I'm by myself it's not fun. You know, drinking is a social yeah. thing. You, like, you know, like gotta, if you you know drink by yourself, it's like. You know, it's kind of boring. <laughs> it's not fun. Well, yeah, like, you know, you know, I got a cabinet. I got liquor in it, but it sits there. Yeah, I don't drink it. Me too. Ninety-eight. Yeah, ninety-eight yeah. percent of the year. I've got wine. I've got you name it. I've you know, whiskey, vodka, whatever. I've got it all, but it just just sits there, like you, like yours. <laughs> just sits there. Yeah, yeah. Me, I love whiskey, but I prefer tequila because it's more. Uh, it's more. Um, uh there's less calories per alcohol you know so you gain less weight by <laughs> drinking bars which is more effective so yeah yeah sometimes it's just have one one nice drink at the end of the week and then you can relax and focus on you know your projects and stuff uh speaking yeah. of uh lulu what have you been working on any coils at all this week i know you're a dabbler Man, I like I still have them here. Let me show you guys. Like hold on. Okay, so I have this. Ooh. Can you see this? Okay. All right. Okay. This thing, I don't have it's supposed to do the it's like a lazy Susan. I remove this. I was trying to get this. I don't know. Here, let me move my thing. If you can see it. I, hold on, I'm sorry. Okay, can you see this? I taped the magnet. Okay, right. and it's supposed to, uh, like, it's supposed to move, but I need it on a flat surface. Hold on. Okay. Okay, I was trying to line up magnets all around this. It, it moves a bit, but then it stops and it, it like it, it goes back so i'm still trying to tweak but that's what it I'm goes into a magnetic locking yeah yeah 
Yeah, that, that's it. Okay, magnetic locking. I didn't know what the word was. But yeah, that's what it's been doing. So I don't know. I think I need more magnets. You know, I, I need a little, a few more magnets. Uh, I don't know. I need to get more, a few more magnets maybe because I don't think so I have So you're trying to make magnets. what, uh, you're trying to make what, it's just like a magnet motor? Yeah. See, like, yeah, like, you might want to look into um, shielding the magnets. I've seen some guys shielding it. So when you go too far, it go, it gets pulled in by the next pull. So yeah, what you want to do is isolate the magnet with the aluminum. Okay. And then actually, uh, add like a piece of steel. Just add a or piece of steel, steel to one side. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how about the? I heard thick aluminum works too. It's a good reflector, so it kind of blocks the other field. You might want to look into what uh, Harold uh, Howard Johnson was doing uh, back in the day. He uh, kind of perfected that magnet motor. It's very okay. tedious work. It is. But, it is tedious. But like the whole uh, this thing, I, I found. I bought it like from Target. It has like the little uh, uh, metal uh, bearing balls right there already right, right. pre-built yeah. into it. Um, yeah. But I can't find right. the other magnets. I moved them. It's like five bucks. Uh, so I had the little magnets lined up, but I, I moved them because I needed the table for something. Uh, right. And so, but yeah, but it was it was doing this. Uh, I, I would turn it and then it would like go like this and then it would go back for a little bit and then it'll stop. I kept yeah. on doing that. So yeah, so this is where I am with this. And I have yeah, a magnet. Definitely yeah, look up Howard Johnson. Yeah, you need to shield one side yeah. so that it continuously flows without the back. So it doesn't go backwards. Okay. You have to shield the yep. one side. But this is a cool thing. If you guys, if somebody wants to, like, it already has the, like, the little metal balls built in. I don't, you know, I don't, I didn't have to, like, build the oh, acrylic okay. uh, stuff. It just, you know, when I saw it, I was like, oh, perfect. I need that <laughs> for my project. I don't know. I, don't know yeah, I got a bunch on. of those. They're, like, you know, small to big. Uh, the the yeah. metal ring, they're aluminum yeah. with ball bearings in it. Yeah, they're they're awesome. Yeah, so that's and I I got a new drone, a little drone. Nice. You know? My stream yeah. yard's crashing on me again. What the heck is going on here? So I've, been, I've never, gift. I've never had this happen to my stream yard. It's just like the program's crashing. Oh man, they're really coming after you tonight. I don't know what the heck. Last they week, probably no hired problems. somebody new. Yeah. Then they're excited about their job. <laughs> somebody that actually cares. Holy <laughs> man. No, I'm like, still we're, running. We're, we're not doing anything wrong. So I think they're just Well, the stream is the stream is still running. It's my my link from my laptop to StreamYard. It's uh it's pooched. So I actually have to restart it again, second time. <laughs> the stream's still going. We're still live, which is a good thing. Unbelievable. I've never had this happen before. Well, to this degree, anyway. It just seemed like the second it started the show, because we were talking backstage for like 30 minutes, no problem whatsoever. So the second it went live... All the did, did they use things. the windows? Uh, yes, this is actually it's Google Chrome I'm using, which is probably not the preferred. Uh, you could use a Vivaldi or Tor. It's a yeah, better, yeah. more secure browser. How about Firefox? Holy cow, what the heck? I did it again. Right, I'm going to have to reboot this computer. Uh, Bernie, uh, anything you've been working on? Mr. Bernie? Is Bernie there? <laughs> Hello, Bernie. <laughs> well, I do have some news. I start my big build this week in my, uh, my uh, uh, crystal battery cell. So these are the big ones. They're 12 by 12. They're huge. So I decided, I discussed it with uh, the partner I'm working with. We're going to come up with an inventor's version of, of the cell, which is going to be a lot smaller. It's going to probably be about five inch. 
So when we start producing those, I'll be selling those um, over the internet. Uh, I'll be advertising through my YouTube channel as well as over my Patreon. Uh, obviously, my Patreons are going to get first dibs on it. Um, so, yeah, um, can, can there's some you, interesting uh, things. Can you fully 3D print the parts? No, it's not, the, it, it's not that you can't do 3D printing. It's the, th the fact that there, I use about 13 different elements. Yeah. And some of that fabrication is actually in the plates itself. So, yeah, it's it's pretty common. There's back in your mic now, Mike. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Something happened here. Can you hear me at all? Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Sorry about that. Something, yeah. I got some uh, issues here, and hopefully I can sort it out. Just uh, use I Linux, man. You're not going to get hacked by the CIA anymore. You guys can talk for a minute while I sort my issue out. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can get things going here. Just kind of bear with me, uh, Nathan. If you guys just chat it up there, I'll try to get myself. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Take care of your stuff. Yeah, they were talking <laughs> in the comments. Sean's talking about some uh, Tesla coils and his tuning forks. You can't put a tuning fork next to a Tesla coil unless you get right close to the frequency, about 10 hertz. So you you have to build your Tesla coil to the frequency of the tuning fork in order to get, make it work. So you're going to have to get it down around 425 hertz or somewhere low on that Tesla coil in order to get that to work. Or else you're going to have to get a Tesla coil, and I don't think they make the frequency of like 325 kilohertz. So... Uh, um, you may be out of luck on that one. You're going to have to go the other way. So, and I don't know how, you know, how much capacity you can put in there to get that. Okay. So th that was just interesting what's going on there. Uh, let's see what else we have going on in the comments. Everybody's saying hi. I don't know what the cowbell comment was for. I don't know what that was all about. But whatever. Anyway. Yeah, it is interesting when you talk about frequency and tuning and things like that. You, it's like two ships in the night. Like, if you took something around 500 kilohertz and then 400 or just regular hertz, you, you they won't they won't active, activate each other. It has to be something that's, you know, pretty much on it. That's, that's the way it has to be. And then when they're on it, Together they change the frequency once it resonates, and it, uh, it it'll come out a little different than that. So anyway, oh, we lost uh, we lost Mike. We lost them all together. <laughs> They're really after him tonight, what? man. <laughs> we lost but Mike and his own show. You know now, but he's got like an important job. He's one of them, maybe like. You know, I don't know, you know. They're like, blocking them outside. They, yeah, like, why are they doing that? Like, so he's funny. one of the NATO people, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, and, yeah, the. the uh, Phil, that, that light experiment you were doing last time, that, uh, like, a little while back, is that the experiment that they're taking on uh, w when you're get, doing, talking about? Uh, earlier, the you, light experiment. You mean the interferometer? Yeah, I think that's what it was. I saw a room and I saw some stuff moving and some lights going on. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That was just to prove that uh, a magnet can indeed deflect light. You do a full uh, wire scan because a magnet is a uh, is a source of energy density. And energy density is gonna it creates a force and it's gonna deflect deflect light. That, that's what gravity is. Gravity, that's all it is. It's a gravitoelectric energy density potential. And uh, we're attracted because to the air because it's there's a potential of energy. So, so if I create a big enough magnetic field, can I make like 
What kind of light? Just like regular light or? Yeah, laser and any light, all electromagnetic waves. Uh, it's going to get deflected by a magnet. But it needs to be very, like a, very sensitive to the point of an interfer interferometer. It's extremely sensitive. And um, yeah, so the, the, that's what I was showing off. Because he, there's a lot of people, the, if you look on the, the, the YouTube, if you look on YouTube, you're going you, you're gonna to find people trying to make light deflect uh, using magnet, but they, they don't do it the, the correct way. They need to use an interferometer, which is a lot more sensitive. And um, so, yeah, that, that was the point of that, of that experiment. And um, the, the Cavendish experiment as well, the Cavendish experiment is, uh, proves that the rod is attracted by light when the light is turned on. And uh, that's very interesting because, again, uh, it, it, the energy density potential creates a force creates an acceleration. Um, so that it can't be more obvious. I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's all not, not non-scientific experiment, but there's like three, five, four or five of them that shows the same thing. So, uh, well, you know, no, uh, five. so does the light speed up or slow down at all? Uh, when it yes. gets deflected? Yes. It's, uh, it gets, it gets deflected because on one end it it slows down. The closer it is to the magnet, it's the 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 edge the edge of the photon closer to the the magnet is gonna slow down, which will make that's what is gonna make the uh, the the photon deflect because one edge is being slowed down and the other edge is is at a different speed. So that's so, why. So it, it has an angle to it. So as one yeah. slows down, the other one speeds up. Is exactly. That... Exactly. That's so. so cool. Yeah. So it's like bending light. Yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. what it is. And okay. the other thing, like I was saying the other day, the, the other cool thing that I'm saying in my in my paper is the the light is a from function of frequency. Right. So the right. higher the frequency is go is the faster the photon will, will go. The difference is not big. It's like a, it's like a, the macro scale the, the, you can observe things like that with supernovas from distant galaxies, but it is observable and there, there is a difference. The, the, again the, the more the higher the frequency of the photon will be, the faster the photon will travel. Hmm. I'm gonna have to. Sure. I'm gonna have to work that into something I do, because that just sounds cool. Yeah, it's, it's faster cool. to vibrate. Sorry, it's faster to vibrate. Uh, yeah, saturate. I don't know about traveling light. Right? Light propagates. It doesn't travel. Well, the photon it moves. We call it no, no, it propagates. There's a difference. Propagation, like a well, wave. Propagation is like a wave. Right. You just said light is a function of frequency. But it's a... It's a... It's a wave frequency. It's a frequency wave. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It propagates, like all frequencies. It's just hard to see that. You, you, you can divide it uh, down to the Planck scale, uh, to a maximum scale, uh, which is the Planck, the Planck scale. Which 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 makes it look, looks like a particle, but um, all I'm saying is you, you can subdivide it to the down to the Planck scale. So it what Mike was saying. So it slides like a snake, just like you would see it on your oscilloscope. But does it shorten and go straighter? You know what I mean. Like does the snake come in and, and wind super fast versus like this in in the light? Is, is that uh, it's, it's like a wave. It's like a wave, like Mike says, but you, you can just divide it down to a maximum, 
minimal size, like the electron. The photon is around the size of an electron. And you cannot go smaller than uh, than that size, you know. It's okay. And you cannot go, be smaller than an electron or a photon. But uh, multiple multiple photons, it's like a wave because if you look at stars, very distant stars, you mean if it was just a particle, well, what would be the chances of a of a photon in being emitted from stars from light years or light years away to to hit the retina of our eye? You know, it's like it's very. That's why I think it propagates because yeah, it has to propagate for it to reach us. Otherwise, it won't. Yeah, exactly. It has to uh, uh, shift, like the, bounce off of things. No, it propagates by the light is. I think I'm hitting. Back. You know, it hits one area of space and and, and and it propagates through that to the next area and keeps propagating to the next area of space till it's being translated to the eye. I'll be right so, back, guys. I'll be back in five. If it were to just go from point A to point B without propagating along the way, it wouldn't probably, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like the, the, no, yeah, I agree with he's you. Gone. <laughs> he's gone. It wouldn't well, make it. You know? uh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, uh, unless it's going to through a, a wormhole, I mean, you know. It has to be a wave, but I mean, you cannot just. Infinitely divided, you know. And there's a maximum of a uh, maximum you can reach in uh, in its in its. I don't size. think there is a maximum because if you can keep propagating, there's nothing stopping the signal from uh, echoing along the way. Yeah, sorry, I meant that there's a minimum size that the it can uh, light can get, and that's the Planck scale. So hold on. It, but as it, long it, as it's it, still being generated, it'll keep going throughout yeah. space until it stops generating its source from the source. So, yeah. the are signal. you saying that light from stars, based on what's around it, could be closer than we think or further away than we think based on the interference of anything magnetic? So anything with a magnetic field or anything like that would influence it. Is that kind of where you're going with it? Right. It slightly <laughs> bends it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we could so, be at a different distance than what they're calculating because they're not calculating right. the speed of light correctly. Yeah, it, right. It's like lensing. Like it, it, they it, can't. It, it might be in a different space, a place like in space. Say they can, but, uh, they can't. but you see it in a, in a different place. It lenses, like it, it curves. Yeah, but you it's know? like yeah, but you can't like, calculate that curve unless you know the strength of the source source uh, frequency. Uh, no, just recently they actually discovered that, that uh, some of the light that we're seeing is lens light, not actual e location of where that light is supposed to be. It's it's lensed there. It's a, and just recently they, they you know they I think it's Hubble that uh, uh, you know the images that it sent back it showed that the light is being lensed. Not I heard from the, some yeah. uh, conference or something that they said that light is a pro is when the magnetic field bends onto itself, curves onto itself, into itself, curves in into itself. You know, the magnetic field is curving into itself, and then the light is formed. That's what I heard. It sounds plausible because you would need a strong magnetic field curving in on itself would produce light. In my opinion, yeah, um, it could be the source of the light, not necessarily the, you know, the transmission of the light, but the source of it. You know, is when the magnetic field, the strongest saying, point of the magnetic field, wherever. It's but light, there. light, light, whatever it is, it is a, it is a positron and an electron source overlapping. I know, but but we're talking about a magnetic field bending light, out, you know, in a different path. Which is true also, but keep in mind that light may also be produced by a magnetic field bending in on itself. So that's, yeah. uh, you know, throws a cog in our little wheel there of calculating where the light's coming from after it's been bent around the magnetic field of a star or whatever. Knowing the possibility that light is generated by a magnetic field in the first place kind of changes the uh, everything, you know. 
in that respect to where is the light going when it bends around the magnetic field of a star? It's also being generated by a magnetic field. So what if the, you know, so, so what if stars are created by it... magnetic fields bending in on them, on themselves? That creates the star or whatever, you know, the light. So hold on, are you trying to say that it bends around the solar system a little so bit? So the magnetic field has its own curve, but at some point it just curves too far into itself, and right. you know, and not necessarily collapses, but compresses infinitely or whatever in that way, and produces a, 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 a such a, a energy field of, of light, you know stars created when a magnetic field bends in on itself that's what i heard i can't remember where i heard that but it stuck with me hmm. i like the the idea so you know you got like these uh berkman currents out there they're like huge lightning bolts they look to us like a star you know for, for i don't know how many decades we thought they were just stars and then the, the equipment got better to the point where we were able to prove the theory that this guy berkman theorized before it got proven that these some of these lights that we are calling stars are not really stars they're huge lightning bolts the size of you know an entire cosmos sometimes you know they're, they, they're, they stay there where we see them as stars or they flash in yeah. and out what are they doing they're just there a light you know it's like an like a everlasting lightning bolt like the zeus's bolt you know but we we have been seeing them as just starlight for the past couple decades until our Equipment got good enough to determine that they're not really star. That light that we that we thought was stars is not stars at all. And from that from that from that uh, evidence, they deduced that Berkman might be right about his theory of the existence of these massive lightning bolts that are the you know they just cut through entire universes. And if you think of what what kind of magnetic field is that, you know, yeah, it's just you know if if that's well, uh possible all, all, all you need to uh, to 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 have to create light is a magnetic field and an electric field overlapping that's going to create it's going to create an electromagnetic field which is what this light is but now now you can you know, ask me well, what frequency yeah. do you need but there's already a frequency in the magnetic field in the electric field well it might be a certain frequency that causes the magnetic field when the magnetic field reaches that particular frequency it does cause it to curve into itself being a frequency is already the spiral yeah. shape you know maybe certain what kind of light create that spiral that squeeze it into it you know what but kind the, of light is it making yeah, like yeah, what do the magnetic field what kind of light does it make yeah if like, you take if you take the the magnetic field and you uh, you divide the the magnetic field. It's in it's in uh, Tesla, right? Tesla is gauze, a gauze. Gauze. They call it gauze. Yeah, gauze or Tesla is the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but if if you if you take uh, Tesla, Tesla, the measurement unit is a frequency times times a kilogram per coulomb. So there, there's a frequency right there. So the, the Tesla will tell you what what the, the the what is the frequency of the the magnetic field already. So uh, yeah, I don't have a presentation with me, but you have to visualize it. So it's very really a frequency times kilogram per coulomb. Cool, the kilogram per coulomb is some sort of constant. A constant that tells you how many coulombs the how many kilograms there are per coulomb so you can convert the mass and the the charge can be converted back and forth because it's a form of energy so it's the same thing so therefore therefore the tesla is a frequency times kilogram per coulomb same thing with an electric field uh Electric field is a uh, frequency times uh, the speed of light times the kilogram per coulomb. So you, you you just electric field is the same thing. You just have to divide it by the speed of light, 
and the uh, kilogram per coulomb, but it has a frequency component in it as well. So electric field has a frequency, magnetic field has a frequency. You overlap them together, it's going to create light at, mm. at a certain frequency. Um, but I guess light, you, you need both frequency to be the same. Um, I don't know. I don't know what would happen if you have the electric field that has a one frequency and the magnetic field has a different frequency. There is still some sort of electromagnetic wave, you know. Well, when you excite the photons, they'll start emitting light. You know that that happens at a higher frequency. Yeah, but the photon has the light, a, the light frequencies. You know. Yeah, but the photon has. <laughs> the frequency of the electric field and the magnetic, magnetic field are the same. But what if you have a electric field with a different frequency from the magne magnetic field? This is, I mean, it's still an electromagnetic wave, but what is that? What is it? It's, it's, it's still something, you know? You say yeah, the electric that... and the magnetic are different frequencies? Yeah. Yeah. So you That's have hard a, to imagine. How well, does that even. That's important. Oh, right here. Oh, wow. I did uh, high voltage experiments when it comes with light, right? And the more amps, the more whiter it gets. But then the less amps, it goes into yellow. And then we get into a reddish stage. And then we then we go into like a purple stage when it gets to the barely can, can run. But if I put like a laser or something on it, that's, I'm curious to see if it changes the color at that point from what I had. Like, is, if that's one magnetic field in the laser versus another magnetic field of the experiment, you know what I mean? I mean well, every color has its own frequency, though. Just it. Yeah. Well, because I'm adding more it. heat to that one area, not all of it. Every color has a unique every color frequency. Has a frequency. Like red and blue are different frequencies. Yellow is a different frequency. Green, different. No, frequency. I understand that. I, yeah, I red, that red is hydrogen and blue is oxygen. I don't know the frequencies, but I know they're different. You know. Yeah, but well, yeah, the, the frequency, the, the the frequencies are different, but you you're assuming that the frequency of the electric field is the same as the magnetic field. But what happens when the Electric field has a different frequency from the magne magnetic field. How do you do that, though? I mean, how do you actually do yeah, that? Yeah, I've never seen that. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, how would you actually line it into produce that? Like well, you, you, you uh, just... You, just, just one. Wow, so. you use a capacitor and you add a, a mag magnetic field next to it or something like that. And, I mean... It's going to create the. Yeah. I mean, those kind of events, I'm not saying they can't happen. I don't think man's able to do it, though. It might be in space going on, you know, things like that. But we have to, uh, we have to send our electric out at a frequency to get the magnetic to function. To even become a magnetic, it has to be transmitted at a frequency. And that magnetic will be created at that frequency, if I'm pretty sure. You know. yeah. Would it would it make a difference if it's vac in a vacuum sealed chamber to conduct this experiment? Could, would you be able, you know, uh, would it make a difference? I know the the, the 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 volts are ahead of the amps by ninety degrees. Is it? Is that correct, Mike? Like the volts are ninety degrees way? ahead of the amps. Oh, are are you talking like a magnetic wave? Is that is that what you're going with, Mike? Yeah, because the oh, amps they're... will make the magnetic, but the volts won't. Well, the volts will, but not until the amps catch up. Yeah. So, so as one thins, the other the other one thickens in a ninety degree angle. Yes. That's that takes what you're ninety at. degrees for the amps to catch up to the volts. But that's just the way we see it. I don't know if it's a hundred percent ninety degrees or if it's off a little. You know what I mean? I'm just saying that's how we always picture it. It's around there, you know, 90 or so. So w what exactly are we seeing in space when the amps, get, uh, like, get thicker? Is that then that's what we're observing? If, like, if one well, needs to catch up to the other. Well, when you know that the, the uh, 
when you know that the elves, the amps are lagging the volts, it tells you the volts is obviously more impactful than the amps because the volts so, is transmitted first. Yeah. It's, okay, so it's, in it's space, ahead of the amps. So it, the volts, the volts is, is the first signal to get to the other end of the coil. The amps is 90 degrees behind it, which is rather quick in, in, in time reference, but yeah. it's still measurable. Yeah, like, just, so the more heat you have in your like system, the, uh, the slower the voltage gets there. Is what you're saying, and it, we we don't detect it when what we do, but for other things, yeah. If you have enough volts to get across whatever resistance, it will get across there. It, I think, faster than the speed of light because it's not light; it's a pressure wave. It's a it's a pressure wave. It's pressure. It's potential. It's a potential yeah. wave. And then the current is transmitted with the volts, but it, it's it's 90 degrees behind it, which once you know that, you kind of got to keep thinking about that. It tells you that the volts has got more impact than the amps overall, universally, since it's able to transmit through the coil before the amps. So one is speed, one is pressure. Right. Well, well one is... Uh, current or one is flow not necessarily travel or distance but flow as you know like the river flows or or like a circular flow the revolutions per second yeah speed right rpms so the more amps the more flow uh rpms per second you're you're, you're generating but the volts is just there to get those cycles, those RPMs across the other side of the of whatever inductor or, or resistive path there is, which you know, yeah. And, and I mean, if you like, had a, it, it, if sorry. we're talking about electricity, it would we're talking about like a, a linear line, and it just depends on the thickness of the wire. So if the well, it's thinner, it's vibration. Thick, so lines don't matter, curves don't right. matter. Angles don't matter. It's vibration. It's a vibration. The frequency is a vibration, so it's going to propagate through any geometry through the vibration. Not because it doesn't have to go in a straight line. It's a vibration. So I see it as the the volts as they're snaking through. They're going super fast. I mean, you could direct. And the it the amps create a swirl to slow it down. So it it pulls on it and slows it down. That's the way I always see it in my head. The amps are pulling the Pulling what down though themselves because they're not they're, pulling the they're volts changing down. The, they're changing the speed. So if we turned it into light, it would change the speed of light. If you add more amps to it versus volts, if we add more volts, it goes faster. So I always see it as something creating a uh, vortex in it that wasn't originally there, or a field around it, like magnets do. They always create that round field, but it's pulling the voltage back, so it wasn't going as fast as it should. Do you know what I'm getting? The image of when you guys are talking, how the the solar system propagates through space. You've got the sun in the middle and then the planets all around, but they still, you know, go around while the sun is moving, like, you know, and it's, it sounds like if you've got that energy in the middle, but everything else is, you know, going around to, you know, like all in one unit, you know, I don't know if that makes sense. But if you if you've seen the video of how the solar system moves through space, and it does that whole helix, it almost sounds like what you guys are describing. But we're talking on a like you know cosmic scale. Absolutely, Lulu, uh, and it's I believe uh, Nassim Haramein's model that you're referring to of it, and it's like the yeah, DNA like, spiral of helix of the Earth, the Moon, around the Sun, around the center of the galaxy. It's wild. Yeah, like I, I saw this. Yeah, I mean, just it, we're talk, like it's like killing my hearing aids right now. Yeah. What is it? Huh. Bernie, Bernie got an echo. he's not near his mic, so it's like it's digging into my hearing aids when he talks. It's got like a weird sound in it. Yeah, you sound a little buzzy tonight, Bernie. My apologies. Is this a little better or hold on? Yeah, that's better. A lot of a little. Sorry, yeah, I little had better. Ashton Forbes on in the background. That's why. 
Mm -hmm. Not bad. Absolutely. Yeah, Not like bad. computers. Uh, right? Like computers Free Energy Fridays. We got to get action. Yeah. Well, my computer is off right now because it's giving me nothing but trouble. So I'm actually running the whole show from a cell phone. Oh. <laughs> All right. I always yeah. use a cell phone. It works. The, 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 the CIA is not going to get yeah. you alive. Oh, really? Yeah, I have your know. number. Helping you tell us. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, um, is so it I, I put publish? in the chat the uh, the measurement unit of the electric field and the magnetic field, and you can see you can see kilogram. You, you have the number in the numerator. You have kilogram in the denominator. You have coulomb. Uh, I put a double uh, letter, so it should be one C and one M and one S. But I, I, I put a double double letters because. Um, otherwise, my uh, math tool is going to confuse them with variables. Uh, so these are measurement units, but you can see it's kilogram per coulomb. The, the mag mag magnetic field B, B is kilogram per coulomb times frequency. Same thing with electric field. It's kilogram per coulomb times frequency times speed of light. So you have a frequency on both of them. Can I put those in the uh, public chat, or you want them to stay in private? No, put them in the public chat. I guess, you, you know, disting distinguishing between an electric field and a magnetic field is hard to do. In my eyes, they're the same, one and the same. It's the same thing. You just you just add the speed of light for the electric field. It's very simple. I mean, isn't the magnetic field and the electric field, isn't that the well, same thing, though? Well, they are a part of the same thing, because the second you put electricity through an inductor of any kind you'd be gonna get a uh, magnetic you can't you do get it without a magnetic it. field right exactly so you uh, create a yeah. there's no way to create yeah. an electric field and through any material that's right. not going to produce you a, some so, magnetic response so let's say like uh tesla's uh a longitudinal wave it is non-electromagnetic it could try it could uh, transport electrical energy without a magnetic field, which sounds impossible, but that was Tesla's biggest discovery. So, what wirelessly? Maybe. Yeah. Here? Well, it's longitudinal. It's it's basically like an impulse wave. That's what Tesla calls it. Right. Yeah, right? But you're not using material to transmit. You're just going through the air. Uh, right. Exactly. And that's why. The, you know, the stuff that would slow things down, like, say, a, a magnetic field, it will have interference in space to slow it down. That's why the speed of light is basically a magnetic field bending in on itself, which makes light. That's why it's limited to 186,900 uh, uh, feet per second as the speed of light. Yeah, but you know, a, a radio right. signal does have a slight magnetic field, you know. Oh, right. hold on. But, uh, but uh, sorry, but uh, Tesla says a longitudinal wave is the speed of light pi over two. So I've seen this one interview he did with Chris Carson, and the guy in the audience says, Well, that's exceeding C. And he goes, What's the limit? And Dollar looks at him kind of giggling. He goes, what limit? There is no limit like this. So when you're using a longitudinal wave, the speed of light means absolutely nothing. There is nothing to slow this wave down or this impulse. So that guy in the audience is just like, holy cow. Like, <laughs> you know, it's high over two to the speed of light. So that's like more than double, you know, the speed well, of light. That explains the UFOs and how they move so fast because they're That's not right. in the light thing. They're in yeah. longitudinal wave. Right. Exactly. And that's what, you know. Right. The it displaces the medium. That's exactly right. what I use in my experiment. Yeah. That's so exactly the, the, right. Do, do you see so, the pattern? The, the pattern in the equation I just added, the electric field? Yeah, I've seen that. Field. I've seen that. It's just, it's just the magnetic field times the speed of light. 
You know, right. it's, it's so, all the same thing. So, so, but if you remove the, the, the magnetic field from the equation completely, now you can go way beyond the speed of light because there's no magnetic field involved. And I think that's what Dollard was getting to, what Tesla was talking about. He says, as soon as you re remove the magnetic field and go into a longitudinal state, there is no limit. You exceed C. But that's longitudinal such, waves are not going through any copper wire. They're just going through the air. It, well, it's instantaneous propagation. So we could have a conversation with somebody on Mars. Right, it no propagates limits. by displacing the medium. That's right. You know? That's so right. it flips that's what, the, the electrons. So, no, it pushes the, the medium. It's, yeah, it's an instantaneous propagation. With each so that's why signal pulse or signal uh, oscillation is, is pushing along. It's, so it's, isn't can, it using the hydrogen line? Like the, the, no, the hydrogen? no, it's just radio waves. No, it's an impulse wave through space. It's, it's like just generating you know, signal you know, waves. You know when you take a rope and you start whipping it up and down like a skipping rope and you see the wave? Okay, that's Hertzian. So a longitudinal is that same skipping rope held tight and then one side you give it a little flick and you'll see this impulse wave like, go straight across. Oh, right. it's like the, the telephone game with the rope and the Right, the but it's, it's being right. done on an antenna, right? It's done and done on a vertical right. antenna though, right? Well, well no, there's... Well, there is an antenna, but there's nothing in between the two. It's no, I'm saying they transmit maybe. longitudinal waves on vertical antennas. Yeah, right? because then it, it pushes the medium. In well, all actually, they're horizontal. Actually, they're horizontal. So, like a Tesla they're coil horizontal. Stand, So, like a like a Tesla coil standing up, but the longitudinal wave is not coming out the side; it's coming out the top. Oh. That's why. So I've done, I actually have done this experiment. So when I take two Tesla coils and I face them towards each other like this, if I put a neon bulb or a, 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 what do you call fluorescent tube in the middle, when the two longitudinal waves hit that bulb, you would think it would light up. Well, the sides light up, but the middle where the longitudinal waves are bombarding each other, it cancels out. It disappears. So Dollar says, where is it going? It's going in the counter space. It's what disappears? disappears? What With the two waves, the, the, the two energy propagations, when they hit each other dead on, they disappear. They, there's a cancellation of Oh, they the cancel each other. Oh. They cancel well, each other out. So you get that dark spot in the middle. You'll have light on either side of the tube, right side. So they're not in phase the then. If they were in phase, they wouldn't cancel. Well, they'd amplify it. well it's creating a, like the, a miniature black hole, right? It's like yes, in, in, it's in going in the counter space. Okay. It's going in the counter space. What it's is that? Going into yeah. it to, 180 degrees out of phase. Or? Uh, no, he doesn't know. He doesn't know where it's going. He says it cancels out. It's he, were his signal were, were his two signals in phase? Of course, they're in phase. They were, together, yeah. and they still yeah. canceled out. Yep. They should have amplified. No, wow. they disappeared. They went into counter space, and this is what uh, Dollard was talking about in his lecture. He says that that's should not normal. Happen. No, that's exactly. correct. That should not. When you have signals that are in phase, they they as long as one of the signals is more than one, just a little more than one, you'll have amplification. Yeah, it does it, yeah. and I've actually done this experiment. It does work. I've done it. So and what does CERN it, it, do exactly then? Aren't they like smashing two, well, you know? Yeah, they're using electromagnetic together. coils in a long, long, hollow, circular ring tube to push hydrogen atoms Accelerate in two it. directions and smash them into each other at high speed using electromagnetic okay, fields. Isn't that See, the same concept, what you're saying? Like they, you know, when they the two things meet together, if if it's canceling out, like there there's nothing. Right. Yeah. Shouldn't they be actually smashing and then things, you know, like... Well, we're talking about so, hydrogen here, not a wave. A hydrogen but, is a m m but, actual matter, you know. See, okay. they've actually done this experiment wrong. They're using electromagnetic uh, waves to tr uh, to propel the matter. Why not use okay. Tesla's longitudinal wave, having two Tesla coils, one on either side of that uh, toroid, and have that field go around 
and bombard at a point. Now, what they'll see is now they've exceeded C. If you exceed C, what happens to those particles? They I bet you. I, <laughs> no, I no, I think they actually would disappear. Yeah, I, I think they, I think they would switch dimensions. You would lose those particles. If they were to do that experiment in CERN, it would blow their mind. Mm. Because of the fact that the basis of how the CERN system works is on electromagnetic acceleration in a high vacuum tube. So they can only go speed of light. That's it. That's why they see all those collisions happen. But if they were to do it with Tesla coils, do the same thing, but having the longitudinal waves go in opposite directions and then intersect and bombard, I bet you all those particles would go bye-bye, they would vanish. Mike, you should, like, contact Guaranteed. them and give them that idea. You should, like, you should, like, you know. No, we don't you. want them opening the demon portal fully. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like, you <laughs> what, what, what if what if the other dimension is a better place? What if it's not a demon place, like you think? You know, Segway, like a, just uh, I just if, wanted to interject. Utopia. Oh, sorry, uh, you know? what I was showing there. What I was showing there is some red state pink crystal uh, material that I was just able to harvest that I just produced over the last uh, day here, and yeah, it's a very good sample and a pure sample of it. So I'm getting a whole bunch of samples together to start sending all of you uh, some samples to play with and see if you can make these materials do superconducting anti-gravitic things, right? They make their weight disappear. Yeah. So you know what? As far as any gravity is concerned, I think if you can exceed C, and I think Nathan's in the right direction, Totally. If you start using your Tesla coils and point them straight dead on to the gravi uh, gravifier, you might get some interesting effects. Who knows? Like, I'm just shooting an idea. Of this. Well, I don't I'll, I'll be honest with you. Works. They should have put one dead in the center of this thing from the get-go. It would have made my life a lot easier, but they didn't mm -hmm. do that. Now I have yeah. to... It, now it comes in and it goes... From a longitudinal wave to a transverse wave, and I gotta pop right. it back to a longitudinal wave. Right. So that's it's what the piezo is supposed to do is pull it back up. So yeah, that might be on purpose, it might not, but it would have been just so much easier for lift just to put it in the center from the beginning. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would, my whole life would have been easier. I would have been done with this months ago. Is the transverse yeah. the same as Hertzian? Well, yeah, it's yeah, it's a wave. It's a wave force. It's horizontal. Right? It's 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 letter. It's electromagnetic. All it's right? horizontal wave. It well, it could be horizontal. It could be sine wave. It's Hertzian. You know, it it creates a magnetic field. Okay, a longitudinal wave does. It's a vertical not, wave. It's a vertical it's wave. A, it, it, it's it's a vertical wave that does not create a magnetic field. It doesn't right. exist. And well, you know, vertically, that, vertically, you're going straight up against gravity. Horizontally, you're not. Maybe that has something to do with it. Well, it's just the uh, you know uh, the reason why a well, reason why a, a longitudinal does not uh, create a magnetic field. Maybe that's why. That's what Tesla was emphasizing the the significance of the longitudinal wave because of the fact that it doesn't create a magnetic wave. In the Hertzian form, that's why it can exceed C. There is no limit; it's instantaneous propagation. Well, see, Don't if like you build Tesla coils long enough, you get the skinny ones, okay? Right. And they go cold in the center, so you can always rob their power. When they right. get bigger, now they flow. Now, right. now you're getting the flow that's more in there, so it gets even colder than it's supposed to get. Right, that's it's what cools down quick. everything, but that's what also makes it lift. You have to have that. Mm -hmm. The problem is the Tesla coil doesn't have enough flow, it's got a little coil here and a long coil here. Right, you need but, to change the, the thing, 
You need right. to change it like this. So if I can Honestly, print a Tesla coil that looks like a UFO, I'd be, right. I'd be sweet. You know, you know what? I think Tesla made the Tesla coil for a reason for us in the future to decode it. I think yeah. there's a lot more secrets to the Tesla coil than uh, originally what people thought. Oh, yeah, it just makes sparks. Oh, have you ever, really. you ever seen Sean's Tesla coils? Sean's? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, the round one? Yeah, I seen the round one there last week. Oh, you got to wait till you see the rest of them. He's got these things winding and everything, and, and they're just like uh, AC flybacks. They're, right. it, it completely blows them all round. But then if he puts a core in the center of the hollow, I mean, he, right. you know what I mean? He's going to get something totally different than he does with just the pure round shape. Right. So he's got a whole different thing going on there, man. And he's only scratched the surface, but it's like way beyond everyone else already. Hmm. Have you ever had him on your show yet? or? Oh, yeah. He was on just uh, just last week. He presented and everything, and he showed his Tesla coils. Like yeah. I said, though, in talking to him, I know he's way ahead. So, mm. but that's the next step. I want to get a UFO shaped one, you know what I mean? Where I can get the actual features that I want because right. I'm not getting it out of the gravity fly like I wanted to, not in the amount that I need. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it drags it down based on some of the other parts of it. Yeah. The other device that uh, Dollar really talked about, and Dollar's a, a real uh, cutthroat when it comes to real devices versus you know, fictional devices, he, he's, he sticks with what he knows is real. And one device that is actually really interesting you should look into is the Integatron. I have looked into it. Yeah, hey, Mike. That, George Van Tassel. Yeah, look into him. He was an interesting character, that guy. Mike, I'm not able, yes. I, don't have a, I don't have a link to stream this to my channel on the stream. Yeah, well, because... I've got the free version. It limits me on certain. Go well, Ben streaming it. Ben can do it because he's got probably the paid version. Right. I have a paid version too. No, no, no. He's doing it through like another program, like OBS. Oh wait, that oh, other okay. thing, uh, Streamlabs oh, or whatever. Else. Yeah. Oh, okay. Streamlabs. Right. Okay. That's he's how he's doing it. Streamlabs. Okay. Yeah, he's not doing it on on this. Right. I'm gonna have to do this thing, man. Different, different plan. Uh, By different the way, fantastical frequency equals one over time, right? Yes. When you when you create it correctly, you're gonna get a waveform that goes like this. And we were talking about it before, it circles. But then take right. hundred markers, and all of them are doing it right. That's what right. you're getting, but it's gonna expand, right? And it, mm -hmm. when it expands, you're gonna get a whole lot of static electricity. If you're right. standing in that area between right. the expansion and that, mm -hmm. then time change. It's a time dilation. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it you explains that F equals one over T it, right. it perfectly. It perfectly explains exactly what's going on. Yeah. Because like the propagation of uh, static electricity is pi over two to the speed of light. So that's why, that that's why it's imperative to have in anything that lifts. That's right. You have to exceed C to get any gravity. I don't care what anybody tells me. It's you have to exceed C. Uh, so. Nathan, I have a I have a question with the gravity flyer. Yeah, so go ahead. It, it, cre it, it creates a a whole big old bubble, right? Like of energy. Does time is time inside of that area different than time outside of that area? The problem is it creates it more like a magnetosphere. So it's creating two bubbles, one on top, one on the bottom. If it created okay. one, we would have already been done. The problem is it's creating two, and now you have to pop field between the two in order to get it to lift. Does that make sense? So yeah. it, it it would be better with a hole in the plate in the center, no center plate, you know what I mean? With the rotating things on the outside of a Tesla coil would have been so much simpler. You know what I mean? But, so it's not yeah. creating any time dilation. Uh, it's current it state. could in the disk, okay. but they're not strong enough. Okay. They, they, they don't have the right frequency on, on them and everything. They, so it's probably not. It, it it's kind more of, cool, of like if they, you can, and then, you know, you turn this thing on for like, I don't know, a day or two, and then you go outside into the world and like, you know, 
It's, you're ahead of everybody, you know, like a day or It's two. a time pausing machine. Not, not the way this one is. It doesn't have the right geometry to it to do it. The, yeah. You turn it on and pause time for two days. And... I, I have basically a field generator is what the gravity flyer is. It's a field mm -hmm. generator. And basically it just happens to make lift if you know how. That's it. But its total job, I can tell you this as a fact, it's a field generator, okay? It generates a Tesla coil field because you're rotating the Tesla coil at that point. If you put it on the disc that rotate, it'll create a field. And then if you put a high voltage on it, it'll push that field, okay? If you put the Tesla coil to the center plate, it'll hold in a high voltage field or static field. So it's basically a field generator. A That's Tesla field, but not is. a magnetic field or whatever. Oh, it, it'll be, it, it has more <laughs> magnetics on the Tesla coil than it does on the static, so it holds it in. So yeah. if it was really uh, strong it, enough, it could create a warp field. It could, like, you know, right or no? Oh, I could create one big field, and I can have it hold on uh, to a like, lot of static electricity. But it would have been yeah. much easier just to create an outside shell and produce it on that mm -hmm. that, that spun. Would have been so much component. easier. Yeah. yeah. The heavy side. And if you look back in history at Oliver Heaviside, man, did academia attack him. Oh, my God. Like, literally, he they made the poor guy go nuts. And they yeah. uh, suppressed him and everything. It's one guy to really look into is Oliver Heaviside. I'll take a look at it. Yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah. Oliver Heaviside. Yeah, but yeah, they did a number on him. Actually, it would be so much easier. Look, I could put a piece of paper around the whole thing and get much more effect than I ever could leaving it wide open like this. So, because then I can magnetize it, I can then create charge, I can move it anywhere I wanted to, and it wouldn't be a problem. The, the yeah, it's wide open, and it, right. it has to have an enclosure, and that that's like one of the main fault failures of it like uh say like a glass dome around it would that work well i don't or, know uh, glass but uh, like or I said, even plastic or even plastic, I, I, plastic I mean, sphere. if if you put plastic around it like a balloon then mm -hmm. the inside would heat up and if the balloon can take it it would lift up because it'd really? be basically about, a hot air balloon at that balls? point you're putting so much energy crystals? into it Mm. Now, if you use, say, bowls. actually, I was thinking something more like a dielectric. Now, apparently, polyelectric acid, which they call PLA for 3D printing, it's one of the most common materials that they use for uh, 3D printing. If you printed that and put that around your Graviflyer, I don't think it would heat up because it's a dielectric. Actually, well, it's a very good dielectric. If I put it, it needs to hold it. So it, it the PLA won't hold the charge. So I need it to hold it. So I need to add paper. So paper mache the outside and we yeah. might be all right. Paper, actually, what you might want to use is tar, uh, paraffin wax or beeswax, and uh, tin foil. You can use tin foil as well. That's what uh, Townsend Brown was using, making his uh, lifters. So he was basically making like a, a uh, like a dome shaped capacitor, is what it is. And that holds electrostatic charge. Well, so, it depends on the amount you want to hold it for, how quickly to just charge well, the charges. That you have to take that in consideration. Your styrofoam holds the charge for a long time, but it also takes longer to charge. Where yeah, paper but, charges and discharges almost immediately. Right. So that's why he was using the tar and he was using uh, beeswax or paraffin wax. Now, uh, he was pumping in over 400,000 volts in some of the devices, actually some up to 4 million volts. Yeah, that's so insane. He, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a well, lot of charge. Sounds like Faraday density determines the charge rate. Yeah, you're building a electrostatic uh, condenser is what you're making. You know, it holds that charge. Yeah. So would the, would, maybe would looking, the Faraday cloth work? 
like that that uh, uh, there's a cloth it's like a no Faraday that neutralizes cage. no that neutralizes okay. yeah you want okay. something to hold that charge in so uh, even mica if you were to get some kind of material that has mica in it you know that's like a uh, like a sheet or a foil is that the stuff is that the stuff they use uh, with the, for the cooking stuff capacitors. like that sh that that yeah you, stuff? You, you, it's an insulator yeah well okay. it's an insulator they use it for uh ceramic uh capacitors it's mica it comes from the ground it's it's actually a rock right a very very uh porous rock it's very brittle uh, it flakes off it's really a, a unique type of rock i've actually held some in my hand it's pretty pretty interesting they use them to uh, insulate transistors against heat sinks yep so mica is that what you, that's the yep. one you were talking about yep. mica it's underneath yep. the pyramid in mexico right they found yes, it is. maybe the pyramid of, is a transistor and it's a the earth is the heat sink maybe they're insulating against the earth with it hmm. Yep. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's good at an insulator, yes. Yeah, it holds electrostatic charge. So say if a lightning bolt were to hit that pyramid, guess what's going to absorb all that energy? The mica in the ground. Or the pyramid. Well, it'll go through the pyramid. If the pyramid's made of, say, uh, um, uh, Oh, you're uh, saying the mica monster. will slow down the, the discharge of the bolt, so it don't destroy anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it'll it it'll absorb it and let it out slowly, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep, you'll have electrostatic charge, so that whole space where that pyramid's sitting is going to be charged electrostatically. So in right? a sense, mica could be a, a, a storage uh, device. Sure. Well, they use it in capacitors today. So to store or to insulate? Oh, I guess well, you're insulating your well, storage, I guess. well, you're insulating between two plates, right? So and the environment, really so that's how you create storage. So there's this yeah, product called that. Flex Seal. There's this product called like Flex Seal. It's a, it's like a, a rubbery black thing. You could, if you have something like that's broken or cracked, but it's like a, you, it comes in different colors. But I think that would be a very good insulator, for what you're talking about. Like, I, 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 I don't know if you've seen the commercial seen store. It. It's called. Yeah, I think that stuff would work really well. Yeah. Let's check that out. Because it's, yeah, it, it would be so much easier just to build a whole separate thing that's done right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, you know, Townsend Brown, he was using tin foil, he was using tar, he was using uh, paraffin wax or beeswax. Uh, Wouldn't you want something like light? Like light, is something. Wait, you was, is it heavy? Like, like, it, like, it wouldn't like really matter. Weight. It wouldn't matter because his his device was actually creating a lot of lift for the amount of voltage. Yeah, but you're also and, creating a field bubble that makes it separate from the uh, Earth itself. Right, right. So it would be like the weight of it would be on the moon versus the weight yeah. that it is here. It yeah. wouldn't really, you know, matter because you're creating that field bubble. Well, here, going back to right. and, magnetic field bending light. Well, if you can bend light with a magnetic field, it's not far off to think that you can bend gravity. Well, see, that's what I was asking, because if I can spin that Tesla coil, you know what I mean, right. on that plate, mm -hmm. I want to yeah. put up a laser to it, and I want to see if it moves it at all. You know what I mean? Oh. All you got to do is bend gravity it. around the craft, not yeah. through it. I mean, I just want to see what it does. If it can... If it can just bend just a little bit on the little edge of it, deflect it. gravity, not necessarily bend it, but but I can find a way to see it. Yeah, with the laser light. Yeah, yeah I don't think absolutely. these craft are canceling gravity or doing anything such sort of a thing. I think they're just super positioning themselves in the gravity field by deflecting it around the craft. Yeah, but that it makes a lot of sense when you look at Alexi's infrared on the gravity flyer. You see the field; it's clear as day. It's right there. Of course, so it's going to be on the that shell light of the ground because it's showing. reflected. Yeah, something in that light showing. So, you know, somehow if we you found see light on the craft. If you see light or coronas on the craft, that means that, the and it's obviously anti-gravitic. That must mean the gravity is not penetrating through the matter of the craft and not affecting right. the craft. It's going exactly. around the craft. That's right. It's creating that corona. 
the gravity yeah. field is creating so, that yeah. So Nathan, you but you're right. I, it would be nice to see it. It would be fun to actually Because you could use a magnetic the field yeah. to bend light. Stars, magnetic fields do that. You're bending light with a magnetic field. It's not far away to bend gravity with a magnetic field. Well, yeah, because you're, because you're canceling, creating that field, gravity cannot penetrate it as if it were penetrating you know, a regular it makes sense object. now how these crafts are able to disappear. They, they already you're, bend gravity. You know, well, you're bend light too. Yeah, I think it's a, a deflection principle, uh, not so much canceling it out. It's a deflection. Right. right. It's not. It's not canceling gravity. Right. It's deflecting yeah. it around. Right. Yeah. It's a lot less energy to do that. If you had to cancel even a, the weakest force in the universe, it's still a lot of energy to cancel the. Weakest force in the universe, in my opinion, because it's, well, it's we, maybe it may well, be a weak force, but it's everywhere. It's grand. It's the grand force. Yeah, but well, that's yeah, right. I think you don't want to go against that, but you can have it go around you a lot easier and cheaper on your own energy by yeah. deflection. See, see, the the problem is, is nobody's been able to establish that's magnetic the, field. Uh, not the magnetic field, uh, the, the the constant of the zero, what the zero is in space, because the Earth is moving through space, you know, over 200,000 kilometers per hour. We're traveling around the sun. Our sun's traveling through, you know, the cosmos at a huge velocity of speed. So therefore, even though gravity is the weakest force we know of, it has a profound force on any matter because we're traveling so fast through space. We haven't been able to establish a ground point, a zero. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah so, there, there's, no, there's, no, there's no absolute grid. That's what you're saying. Everything right, there's no up. absolute, there is no absolute zero. Yeah. Right? What, what, do you, what, do you, what is that anyway? Uh, what does that mean? A balance point? Uh, no, a, a, a zero stop point in space because we're moving through. Does that space mean no right motion now. or a point where there's no, no motion? Right, exactly. But I don't think that no exists, motion. Mike. I, I, that doesn't exist. The the zero point is where the uh, most significant mass in the the most important oh. mass in the universe is. It will define where oh, okay, okay. everything that, else that, is yeah. rotating around. You know, if you look at it like that, yeah. that might exist. Yes. But, but, but if, if easy, that doesn't yeah. exist, if that, you know, if there's two of those objects, the same size, the biggest objects in the universe, and if there's two of them, then there's no such thing as it's balance. Like, it's, all, it's also, too, like with the speed of light, kind of on a different side. Even like though the they're the same size. Light, like, say, like the speed of light, Eric Dollar calls it an arbitrary constant because the speed of light is not constant. So therefore, it's an arbitrary constant because the speed of light varies. It's not the continuous speed. Other things will influence the speed of light to slow it down, speed it up, whatever. So, you know, he says that regular mainstream science just uses that as a benchmark for actually for, you know, speed of light, you know, to calculate speed going oh. through space. Where he's saying, one how can you use? he says, why? How can you use that if it's arbitrary? Yeah, how can you even? How can you even? Always alive. It? Yeah, exactly. There, it's just assuming that there's no no particles, no nothing, and you know, like complete like emptiness, and you know, per second so, it would equal like two two hundred something uh, three three. I think right. Okay, the speed of light. I have a. I have a good answer for Mike to explain what I'm talking about, zero. Zero movement in space. So right now, I'm moving through space. The cell phone's moving through space over 200,000 kilometers a second around the sun, and the sun's moving. So in actual fact, this cell phone here has a tremendous amount of energy in it. Now, what happens if I take the cell phone and I throw it off the train? This cell phone's going to make a hell of a boom when it stops on the ground. That's what I'm after. Where is zero? 
See what I'm well, it's not, at, it's not where it hit the ground. Zero's not there either. But that's Yeah, right. but the ground, the ground is relative also. Okay. So, I mean, you have to find perfect balance. And even then, and that gives you zero when you find balance. And that is created by two weights. Right. So, Equilibrium, right? Right. And let's say, like Phil said, there is this grand biggest planet in the universe that creates a place where there is no motion, which you can do that if, you, if you're if you the biggest planet in the universe. You're yeah, the source of gravity. The you are right. the source of gravity. You are not moving. No, you are moving through no, space. No, not if you're the biggest planet in the universe. You are the source of gravity. Exactly. So, you yeah, are not moving. Right. Everything yeah. else is. If, if you're the biggest mass if you have the, the most universe, mass, you cannot move and you cannot your rotate. Planet, the, world. the most mass. The, the biggest whatever, mass. Can, whatever, the most mass. The biggest mass cannot move and cannot rotate as well. Yeah, the but it's not mass, mass it's it, density. a certain area of space. The biggest mass, because you have... Yeah, but you know, it doesn't have to be mass. It just has to be dense. Completely dense. Density. It, well, then you get closer it, to black it, hole formation. It has to do with that. the atomic weight of something. It has to be higher in that, not necessarily the size. The mass, I mean, we're, the size. We're, the we're heading in the in the direction of of suggesting that black holes are the source of gravity. But well, they move. We never know. We won't know until we Where's get it? there, right? Not if yeah. they're the greatest mass in the universe. Not if there's the you know if there's one black hole that's bigger than all the others. That one is not moving. Yeah, assuming yeah. it's the oh the biggest thing in the universe that it, and of and the, and this is the only universe, <laughs> and even light can escape it. So you know, yes, yeah. it's, it it's a pretty pretty interesting. See, the, 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 that was the problem when but to find zero, Mike. You got to find the, the the thing with the most mass in in, in all of the cosmoses that exist. Yeah, and, and and we probably are in a bubble multiverse. So I think the universe. And likely this, if you find that mass, it's in the center of everything. Yeah, and everything's. Oh, we got know. Ben. We got Ben on here. Ben, but I think there. zero exists in a hey. in everywhere. I think zero exists everywhere because in between the translation of one moment, hey, or whatever you want to call it, to the next, you yeah. have a balance point. And that's where the zeros found. In between the translation from one momentum to the next, in the middle, there is balance of that transmission. Right. Right. And, that's and that's why that's I think right. there's zero everywhere, but it's not, what's the word you used earlier? It's not the... Uh, Ar arbitrary constant. Right. It's just like the light, I guess. Right. Yeah. You'd have to create right. an artificial right. zero point. It's not... It isn't zero point the singularity? It's only awesome. constant in between each transmission of momentum in the in the center yeah, of that transmission everywhere. of the I momentum. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe it. Well, it's everywhere. constant for that transmission only, not no, the next transmission. You have to create a zero point. Well, each yeah. e each balance between transmission of momentums, it has to be a center point of that momentum transmission has to be balanced. For the yeah, transmission it's, it's, to happen. That's why some cultures never use the zero; they always use the one first. It, there's a difference. There, mm. it, it has to be an artificial zero point. It, it, unless yeah. you get to the zero point in the center of everything. So otherwise, you just create an artificial one. So I don't know zero. I don't know zero. Rep, 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 I don't. I don't know zero is the same e thing. E as equals balance. does not make. Equals does not make a zero point. I right. think it's more the equal sign we're talking about here, not the zero or the one. Okay, well, I, balance in my head. I'm hearing zero point, and I'm thinking the perfect center. balance. Perfect yeah. balance is zero. Everything is neutral at the zero point. There is no imbalances. Everything is in balance. There's no imbalance. It's in it's balance. neutral. Self -stable. No, I, self stable. I think it's completely neutral. No, and no, you got no momentum happening neutral. everywhere. And in between the transmission of whatever to the next of that momentum, there's got to be a balance point. Right. We're all just yeah. There's equals, but it's yeah. not a zero point. It's, there, there's well, balance. that's what I think. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what I think. Zero of the zero 
maybe right. I'm wrong. I, I, just, I, I hear just, what you're I just saying. I'm contradicting myself. You're right. I, I zero, hear exactly zero, what you're zero. saying, but I, I disagree <laughs> with the It's equal. It's it. not zero. It's the equal sign, not the Yes, zero. it's equals. There you go. Right. Zero yeah. point something totally different. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. So you're saying it's the equals. But it also sounds it, like zero. sounds like that one. So basically, if you want to pull energy out of a zero point, right? So you go over to your Stargate and you go, okay, I want a Stargate program and I want zero point energy. It basically means the center of your vortex. That's your zero right. point. So right. just like everything in the cosmos, that's the center of the vortex. That's a, that's a zero point, right? So What's when you create one? an artificial zero point, you can take anything that creates a zero point as long as right in the center. And it creates one zero point right in the center. And the plus one will be the outer section of the vortex of one side, and minus one will be the other there side. You go. No, so, but, t- 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 but, but that, that's zero. But nonetheless, that zero is in the balanced position. No, I'm not disagreeing with that, Mike. Not at all. I'm just saying it's not everywhere, and you're not creating zero points everywhere. That's all. Think, I'm saying. T- t- think about I mean, it. Between two, between two momentum points, it's the same thing as the black hole. So that's a that's a. So you think about it. Uh, zero point. Uh, I think you got momentum, it out. momentum transmission. I think transmission. you got it figured out. Think about it. If you if you consider gravity to be a superimposed force, so yeah, you, you have the gravity of you have the gravity of the earth, the gravity of the sun, the gravity of the galaxy, the gravity of the galaxy cluster, the gravity of the galaxy supercluster. In the galaxy of uh, the, the gravity of the universe, these are all adding up, and these are all layers of energy. But what what tells us right. that there's no there's no there's nothing greater than the another layer of gravity that is greater than the universe? Can you imagine all the energy that we would be in, all the 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 energy generated by the bubble multiverse? The gravity generated by all that. Yeah, it's infinite. There's so much energy, in fact, that life had to be formed. Maybe that's what the, that's uh, that's what defines the uh, the light relative gravity magnetic the energy permeability and the uh, the cosmological microwave background, if you want, mm. because it's Way some sort that. of gravity, gra- some sort of layer of energy that comes out of nowhere, but it's, 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 it's sucking me out of nowhere. It's it's actually the uh, gravity layer of the mo- bubble multiverse. Mm. That's that's the, the gravity generated by other universes around us. Right, so but each a, gravity. I mean, is energy. there only one? There's only one gravity field, or I mean, each 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 mass it's all, it's of all matter layers. has its own field, though. You know. Yeah, it's all layers of gravity or layers of energy, if you want. Right. I don't, so think, I don't think it's one field. I think they're all, like Phil said, it's not one gravity from one place. Every mass is generating a certain yeah, amount of gravity. A layer of, of uh, gravity energy. It's so uh, it's right. like, yeah, it's like it. when... And they're all radiating outwards, system. you know, the gravity. Yeah. Like we have Andromeda and, and, the, uh, and you know, our galaxy, the Milky Way. They're supposed to be at one point they're going to, like, you know, merge. So... Would could you say that one has more gravity pull on the other just by the mass because it's one is bigger than yeah, the other? Of course, okay, yeah, okay, one so, field, one and, right, exactly. The one so north, that, that, one magnet yeah. stronger than the other, so that means right. so, you know, the greater the mass, the the more uh, mm-hmm. gravity pull, right? We see that happen so, anyway. So, you know, they broke, they, you know, they've already proven this, you know, the weight that we weigh here on the earth. If you go to the moon, you only weigh one third of the weight that you do on the moon because the moon's a lot smaller than our planet. So smaller mass, smaller gravitational forces. I think the moon pulls its gravity from us on the Earth. Probably does. Probably I, does. I, I don't believe it has its own gravity it, it, per se. It has gravity from the Earth. Could yeah, be, because yeah. it doesn't go because around. Because it doesn't spin. Itself. It doesn't spin itself. It Assuming just, it's it a, a, actually a, a moon, and not a hologram, it, it would be, you know, <laughs> held on to the Earth by. It would be held on by the Earth. Yeah, 
It, it has so, mass. Assuming you it live has on flat Earth, mass. can I interest you in a canoe for that? <laughs> I mean, I have a canoe already. Had it for thirty years. <laughs> yeah. So I'll say, so say that uh, Jupiter was a solid mass. Could you imagine how much we would weigh on Jupiter? Ooh. Probably. Oh yeah. You know, we probably weigh in the tons. Well, it's like Venus spins. You know what I mean? Enormously mm. fast. And they crush everything on the surface uh, yeah. with the speed that if you just put a moon out there and slow it down and pull some of that away, you can get it to slow down and then it wouldn't crush people so much. You'd right. be able to build Our a whole, tidal force in the center. Yeah, probably. Our whole biology away. would be different. Our whole biology oh, would God, be different. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, some, uh, actually, to the point where it probably would kill us. So. Yeah, if you landed on Venus, you'd be dead. <laughs> I, I can't no wait for us to land on the moon again. That way, I'll know for sure it's real. Did you well, think Earth had, had going a... there on the moon? I mean, last time they landed on there, I wasn't born yet, and that turned out to be somewhat of a lie. So I, I mean, I'm thinking let's, like the dinosaur. Let's decant, the, let's decant the lie and go back. We got the money to do it. Let's do it. Yeah, Mike, we're all we're all going to take the gravel flyer to the moon. How about that? That'd, of course, that'd be the first Shit. place anybody yeah. goes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm far, take, nobody's I'm come take... back from there and say, "Hey, here's a moon rock." <laughs> Other than no, the, no, it's the one rock. They it's said frustrating. It it's frustrating, right? But uh, we'll, we'll we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll By now, there should have been hundreds of people on this planet that were able to fund their own travel to the moon and bring back souvenirs. Yeah, and, and NASA you would know a friend that knows a friend that somehow, saw these souvenirs by now. Somehow NASA like, lost the technology to go back to the moon. They don't no, remember I mean, how they did it. So. You know what? They had a NASA engineer <laughs> actually admit on film that we haven't got through the Van Allen belt. If right. The yep. I, I that. It, They've admitted it a couple times. Moon. The moon is past They've that. admitted it a couple times on their live streams. Right. They've admitted we have not been able to break through the barrier of the Van Allen belt. If you do, Good you're point. dead. And then, and then when somebody Voyager? specifically addresses that, like, well, well, they did it in 1969. I remember that alive. And they're like, well, we lost that technology. We don't know how they did it. <laughs> That's can, that was their answer. How... <laughs> That that's ridiculous. So pathetic. I know. That's I know. Then, but I mean, that's that's what the students now are taught. Like, you know, I guess, you know, like we don't have that technology anymore. We don't know how they did it. Oh my God. It's crazy. There's what about the Voyager? And what about the Pioneers? And what, what about, about Elon Musk? Is, what, what, hasn't he that, gone to the moon yet? No, he hasn't. No. He can't get caught past the Van Allen belt to. either. That's right. You know how much that's light shielding <laughs> you would need to protect the human body? You would need several tons of uh, of lead shielding to protect. And that's Starlink, by the way. That's right. below the Van Allen Belt, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. It's, okay. Question: it's What it. about the Voyager? Hasn't it passed? You know, like it's it doesn't matter. Way... It's robotic. It's robotic. It's the you know oh, it's the so biological. Like okay, oh, okay. Biological. You know, if a bio if a biological person goes through the Van Allen Belt, it's fried chicken. And by the way, that's probably what. Destroyed the Voyager's communications getting through the Van Allen belt. That's why that's called us communicating today. It's very possible. But it didn't, you know, didn't show I mean, right away. You know, it came up. Person, the, the, personally, you know, I'd rather send, personally, I'd rather pause. send a machine. <laughs> I personally, I'd rather send a machine up there and let that get fried first before you fry me. Yeah, it's a radiation, right? Isn't it? It's like a. It's a radiation. Right. You know how much nuclear, cosmic nuclear. radiation is it? Nuclear radiation or what, what kind of radiation is oh, it? It's, oh, everything. Cosmic. You know, all the rays. Huh? It's the it's everything. the layer where all the space rays are combating with our field right there. I mean, that's all the radiation, right? Like, yeah, the cosmological got... microwave background is already uh, yeah. Microwave. And that, and, that, and that layer has been forming for since the Earth was born. You know, just imagine how strong it is by now. No, it's that's actually why cooled we, down now. Actually, it's like see, you that's know, why much stronger we, before. Yeah, well, we don't know that's, all these things for you sure. Know, that's why we have a magnetic field around the Earth. It's there for a reason. It's to protect us from uh, uh, these that, rays. That, that and, Allen uh, layer, that you know, belt, is not going to be – its strength is not controlled by the magnetic field of the Earth. It's controlled by the rays coming in 
from space. The magnetic field from the Earth doesn't matter anymore because that field was generated a long time ago. So yeah. now the fields coming from space are keeping it alive. So if it's a belt, so it's just on a, a thin layer around the right. our solar system. Well, what yeah. if they go up? Then there's no rocks up. Or if they go down, you know, like it's, they it's choose getting, a different, you know, right? Yeah, it's, I, getting, it's getting through it. When yeah. I asked my, because uh, my friend is very skeptical and he's very smart, um, when it comes to different areas of science, but he's very skeptical on this, this new science that we're studying. And uh, when I asked him, well, how did they get past the Van Allen belt in 1969? And he, his, his answer was that they uh, timed it in certain times or certain seasons or whatever. The Van Allen belt is thinner. Does that make any sense? I don't know if that's yeah. any kind of yeah, but realistic but the answer. Thing is, the thing is, so you can is, why risk. they have to go through it? Yeah. Yeah. You still risk. Yeah, exactly. You're still taking a huge risk. And I don't know, yeah. like that, that was, I, I, I still don't, I still, I'm still not sold on the convention. It's like not so much story. about, you know, it's not so much about, look, if you're an astronaut and you got to go through a layer of just about every radiation known to man, mm. do you expect to come back healthy? Probably if you got to go through that layer twice. I mean, yeah, I think there's gonna be you're not going to come back healthy going through it twice. Maybe once if you're lucky. Right, right, yeah, because yeah. you got to come Even back with all the, the suiting, right? and you know, and that suit is not going to stop that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's gonna, it's gonna change you in some way molecularly in your body, and it might not be very good. Mm. I don't think that it's a risk that uh, they would pour all this kind of money into to, to send some, all that money through a. a Pile of radiation <laughs> like that and what if aliens times. were humans that changed does the gold stop the radiation the gold layer on the craft that they put for the shuttle uh you would need it's pretty uh, deep or whatever but yeah you would need lead shielding you know anything that could stop you know x-rays and uh slow down neutrinos if that's even possible right. There's nothing um, that can stop that. It's, it's, it's not easy. That's why I'm very skeptical on the moon landing. And, and then there's the equipment inside there. All those rays, you know, you, your whole craft is going to, every relay on there, you got to, you, you just, a huge risk. You're not just the yeah, human life, but the, the, the craft, everything. everything. It's going to be fried chicken. So it's hold up. Are, are you saying the Van Allen belt is stronger than the inside of the earth? Or is it supposed it's, to be weaker? It's a barrier of cosmic, harmful cosmic radiations that have been uh, smacking into that barrier that has formed from the our magnetic field back in the day, you know. And it keeps getting stronger. It's like a field, you know, thin layer field of, that's formed from two fields, two fields colliding, well, ours yeah. and spaces. It, I, I don't know. It just sounds like if you want to keep the Plus mice in the maze, you got to put in thick walls. So it just sounds like they're, they're kind of blowing smoke up or you know what? Because it's supposed yeah. to get weaker <laughs> as you go out. I don't quite buy their whole theory mm. there. Get mm. weaker? The fields? Some holes in there. Fields, fields from the earth get weaker as they go out. They don't get stronger. So right, I don't but the Van Allen belt is not the magnetic field of the earth. It's nothing. It's the point that. where it collides with something else. No, it's 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 formed by our magnetic field colliding with the fields of space coming into our field. I don't know. And don't that know. creates a layer of frequency. I don't know that I buy all that. I don't that know. I have a question. Are this, balancing this is, or whatever is doing the thing, bouncing off each other. Okay, this is this is the solar system that like you know image. If th this right here is the asteroid belt, right? And it wraps around, it, it, it comes after Mars, right after Mars, between Mars and Jupiter, okay? Yes. There, it's not a, 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 it's not like covering the sun. It's just, it, it's a layer. But if you, what if we, like, a rocket or whatever, a spaceship, and go over it? Why do we have to go through it? That's what I don't understand. 
Why are we, why, you know, like, why can't we just go over it to the other side? Why are we having to go through it? Through what? Who right? said we had to go through it? Okay, this is what they're, they're saying, that nobody has been through it. Through a star? No, through the asteroid belt. Asteroid belt. Oh. Yeah, that's the Van Allen uh, uh, belt, the, 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 the rock debris. I thought it was a radiation belt. No, no, it's a, it's a rock debris. It's just it's a, like a, it's a rain. the asteroid belt. That's not the Van Allen belt. Van Allen belt would be between Van Allen Earth belt and is what? Am I getting me? I thought okay, the Van Allen belt was a radiation uh, uh, layer. Uh, uh, never mind of... then. Never mind. I think I. I... It's a frequency right. layer full of. You're radiation. you're over in the Guru land. That's that's where between I'm Jupiter and, and Mars. Yeah, yeah. he's they talking about the asteroid planet. belt. Yeah. Okay. I that's thought it was. Right. A, that's called the Kuiper belt, belt, by the way. The Kuiper belt. It's not a radiation. Kuiper belt's it's further out. Belt. Is it? Uh, it's not a radiation belt. But but by the way, you know you know earlier we were talking about the uh, photon being deflected by the sun, yeah. because the edge of one photon goes at a different speed than the edge of the other photon. Then uh, that means if if we calculate the uh, deflection, if we observe the deflection of the photon, we could solve the. Uh, the dimension of the photon, you know what I mean? By by by, uh, if we reverse the the the, the, the process of um, of calculating the uh, deflection, the predicting the uh, deflection of a photon. If we reverse that process, then we can predict the dimension of the photon. Well, while you guys were talking, I was thinking about that, and I, I'm going to do the calculations, and I'll let you know next week. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm trying to link also the uh, why why an energy potential creates an acceleration. I, I still don't get it. Um, why you know why why um, you know I, if you take out the uh, space time curvature out of your mind, and if you, you just see gravity as an energy potential. Why are we being accelerated towards the center? And still trying to figure out, but I think it has to do at the atomic level and the um, the the difference in speed that uh, similar to the photon we just talked about. So I'm a little bit fuzzy in my mind, but I'll clarify that and I'll come out come out with some mathematics for next week because mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Time dilation is responsible for acceleration. You know, time dilation in the energy potential will induce acceleration because the the force the force is not coming out of nowhere. You know, it comes out of it's being caused by something. So, I think I think time dilation is responsible for creating the the force or the acceleration. Um, I'm not sure if I lost people here, but um, I'll clarify all this next week. Phil, I think you have to think of it in terms of what's the incentive for an atom? Like for us human beings, how do we gain energy if we have incentive for something? If we all, you know, like get energy momentum and turn that thought into energy. What is the incentive for an atom to, you know, gain that momentum and in, in, in uh, you know, uh, transferring that uh, uh, inertial energy into motion. So you have to think, what what would the atom be thinking in order for it to want? You know, so something like that along that lines. Yeah, I think I think the atom is. Uh, I, I already explained the atomic forces in my in my paper, the strong and the weak atomic force, and that's. That that, that 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 builds that, that that creates the cohesion of the atom, uh, and uh, right. the, 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 this an atom is just a form of the energy. Strong, the strong would feed the weak force. Yeah, so the 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 time dilation is responsible for creating the strong and the weak atomic forces. And that explains the, it also explains why the electron doesn't crash into the nuclei. 
Um, so I, he explains all that. And also explains why atoms are repelled from one, one to each other. Well, one to each other, yeah. Um, even if the charges are the same, the, the charges of the nuclei are the same. So I'm able to explain all that, so that's cool. But an atom is just a form of energy. It's not, it's not like a ball of pool or something like that. People see an atom like a ball of pool. Are all, that, all the atoms the same? Are they all universal, the same charge? Yeah, yeah. It's all the same thing. The same charge it's, too? No, no. The charge, are, you have a Different? negative and positive charge, but... I mean, is is the, is two atoms have the same charge, or they have different charges? Um, well, the nuclei has the same charge. The electron has a different charge. So, so basically, if you take two different atoms, is one having the same potential as the other, or they are different potentials? Uh, well, because I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, an atom, an atom is it has the number of protons and electrons. The same yeah. number of protons and electrons, both atoms have the same number, right? Same yeah. ratio of protons and electrons and everything. But, you know, one atom could be uh, excited more than the other and be rotating faster than the other. So one would have more charge than the other. And you have a stronger atom and a weaker atom, right? right? Because of the rotation? Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, and there would be your strong and your weak force. So a stronger rotating... Uh, Atom would uh, deposit its rotations to a slower ro rotating atom, and and that would that cycle would continue on. But somewhere in the beginning, there's an atom spinning faster than all of them. You know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'll think about that later. But uh, my like the point wheel, is the wheel work of nature. You know, the wheel. My my point is an atom is just is just it's just a virtual particle. A virtual particle is energy. That's what it is, and energy is. It's not like a pool of, of, of a ball of pool, that 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 uh, solid ball that clashes with other balls. And I mean, and is the energy density bounce. of each atom the same, or is it different? Uh, the nuclei, yeah, it's the same, but it's, the, the the nuclei is uh, is not the most. Is by far not the, the the smallest particle. The smallest particle is the quark. And the, the atomic force atoms have quarks. Yeah, the the, the atomic force is uh, the gluons that connect the quarks. Um, I'm able to oh, explain that. Right, the atomic uh, force creates the the, the, uh, qu the quark, right? Yeah. So yeah, and you have uh, uh, you have a uh, the the atomic force and all that. So the atoms have ions. byproducts like quarks and neutrinos and stuff. Yeah, and, but my, and my, ions. My, yeah, my, my point is, it's all, it's all, it's all made of, it's all made of a virtual particle, which is energy. And energy, energy are being, are being, are being repelled. They are, they're, they're bouncing. They're, they're, they're bouncing like balls of pool because. Because of the time dilation, the time dilation has an opposite effect. As we're at really close distance, it's going to flip over the charge. So if you have, if you have a uh, a proton and an electron, they're going to be attracted, but at very close distance, they're going to be repelled because of the time dilation. I already calculated that. Because of the distance between them creates a time dilation. Yeah, the, the, there's always time dilation, but right, time dilation may, right, makes effect, time. it makes it makes a weird effect at, at atomic distances, and it reverses the uh, the effect of the charge. And it when they're close together, they repel. Yeah, instead of attracting at very very short distances, they repel, and um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's what it is. An atom is just it's not like a a, a ball of pool. It's a, it's 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 a form of a virtual particle or energy. That, that's all it is. It's there's no there's no conversion of of mass into energy. It's already energy. You know, it's already dense energy. And when when you convert it, and same same thing with a charge. Charges is, is a form of energy as well. 
So it's a, that's all it is. So you, you, you're charged, you, you give thanks to having charged, you give that thanks to the atom. Yeah, mass and the charge is... It's so all, your charge it's comes all from energy. the atom. It's all, it's all the... You can't convert... You can convert the mass into a charge, and so that means that means we can create a pretty pretty damn powerful nuclear bomb if we could if we could convert uh, electricity the the charge of ele- of a of a lightning bolt into into energy, then it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna create a pretty pretty powerful nuclear bomb. Mm-hmm. Because because a charge is a form of energy as well. That's, that's what that's, I think that's that's what the missing link is. <coughs> the, 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 Instead of using energy to, to you know bomb Nagasaki, we used mass. I'm sorry, matter. Yeah, instead of uh, using matter, we use a charge. The energy of a charge of multiple so charges, obviously. Well, what good is uh, using energy to create a bomb if you're trying to make gravity with it or defeat gravity? Then the, the bomb result is not helping. <laughs> it's just destroying your lab. <laughs> yeah, that, you got that's a, that's you a... got to get around the uh, converting uh, energy into into that state where it just blows things up. You know, how do you store it instead and use it for other things? Yeah, that's a practical problem right there. <laughs> mm. uh, well, guys, uh, we're at the two-hour mark. Yeah, we're at the two-hour mark. i got to get up early tomorrow. i got to get some repairs done to the car. Uh, everybody, thanks a lot for joining us. It's our Free Energy Friday, League of Extraordinary Inventors. Uh, we'll go live again. Uh, I believe next weekend is the long weekend, isn't it? Uh, maybe uh, Memorial Day or something. I, I think so. It's Labor, Labor Day, Day weekend, I believe. Labor Day. Yeah. yeah so oh, maybe yeah. we will. Um, yeah. So what we might do is skip next week and then the week after uh, Labor Day weekend, we'll do another live show. What is that so, noise? What was yes. that? The, 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 the <laughs> yelling. I think that was my kids playing upstairs. Oh, no. <laughs> maybe. <No. laughs> Sorry, the somebody lost the Fortnite. <laughs> the, the scream of death. <laughs> but, man, like they're obsessed with the Rob- Roblox, Minecraft, and oh. some other weird oh. game. Yeah, oh. like yeah, they're obsessed with these games. Oh, um, real quick before we uh end the stream, I wanted to let everybody yeah. know I am doing a pre workshop. I got the coil from Nathan, very uh generous Nathan. Thank you. <clears throat> And we're going to be do- going over materials list and how to actually assemble the coil frame this Sunday at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Cool, that'll be cool. Yeah. So we'll okay. we'll do our next show. Uh, I guess September sixth. So it's going to be a week Friday. So, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll be sure to have the, uh, the the results of my experiment by then if it's in two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll yeah, that'd be that. really cool. So, yeah, uh, everybody, thanks a lot for coming on the show tonight. It was a really interesting show, a little bit different than what we normally talk about, but still uh, really cool stuff. Uh, yeah, um, any updates or whatever, you can tune into Faraday Research. Don't forget to check out Old Man Builds and uh, also Benefactors uh, YouTube channel, Mike Does. And uh, Philip will hear about his results in two weeks. Everybody, have a great night. Have a great weekend. All right. There you go. Thank, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You live long and prosper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Live long and prosper. Bye. Take care. Bye. Have a good day, Mike. Have a good yeah, night. Take care. Thanks, Nathan.